This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, point is verse 15, and it reads, The simple believe of every word, but the prudent man look of well to his going. I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to Call Loyam La Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Racha, who does broken thumb. I want to say double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, teach and do rule well. I want to say peace and salutations to the Akimur across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and with sincerity, trying to uh, basically. You know, chat down this wicked ass kingdom. I want to say um, shalom to the brothers and sisters listening and learning, and shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations to whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say shalom. It's, it's Yahweh's brother from, um, well, no longer in Great Millstone, but um, I still subscribe to Great Millstone, so in a way, I'm still part of Great Millstone, you know. But anyhow, um, that being said, because, um, you know, Great Millstone has the 100% truth. But, um, you know, if it, it feel odd, like kind of so used to saying something, you know, becomes habit. And now, you know, this, everything, the Lord, you know, doing, doing a lot, you know. And, you know, just, I never took the time to think about that, you know feels weird not saying you know you know part of gms cleveland or whatnot <laughs> but nonetheless you know i'm pushing for them brothers to make it up out of here and i hope they feel the same way you know what i mean at the end of the day um you know if he's with us he, if he's not against against us he's with us that's what you know what people ignorant called jesus christ said but um nonetheless this lesson is inspired by a video that i saw on youtube and, you know, um, basically says the simple belief of every word. And right now you got, you know, two thirds of our people that are very simple, um, you know, because, you know, they still constantly putting their hope into Egypt. You know, um, scriptures say, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. I believe that's either Isaiah chapter 30 or chapter 31. I'm not going to get it. But nonetheless, you know, because America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, is likened on the, you know, ancient Egypt, you know. And, you know, the elder Yashawamba from Dallas, he um, has constantly went into the comparisons of ancient Egypt and America, which are very many. But nonetheless, um, I found it interesting because I, I watched the video and it's a very short video. I, I wanted to clip it, but it didn't let me. You know, some people don't allow you to clip their videos. So I'm going to probably just play it. I'm going to say um, fair use, fair use, um, copyright code. Uh, I think it's 17. Um, I'm not doing this. You know, not, no profit will be made from showing this video. Um, just I'm using it to line up scriptures with the Bible and prove a point. Um, so bear with me for a second. Because, you know, people say little white lies and whatnot. But I was just explaining to my children, you know, like, um, I think one of my daughters was saying how she lied because she was worried about me getting in trouble or hoping she lied so I wouldn't get mad. I said, you might get in trouble for telling the truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, because eventually by telling this truth, you know, brothers is going to be persecuted. Brothers, their families, you know, that's when you're going to see, you know, who really believe, you know, but nonetheless, um, um, you know, you know, Scriptures talk about blesses you when you're persecuted for my name's sake, for the truth. You know, which Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach, you people ignorant called Jesus Christ, is the truth. But when you get to seeing a person lie, even though, you know, they say, again, little bitty white lies, you know, you got to question because if they'll lie about something small, just imagine what they'll lie about big. And, you know, America is always about images. You know, it's about image. You know, I remember um, when I was homeless, I went and, um, you know, in Cleveland, we, we, we have like all kind of weather. So our winters are real winters. And our summers are scorching, you know, because we're we're basically like in a valley. And I had an opportunity to meet the brothers in ancient the days in California. And that's their weather is kind of similar. And I was surprised at that. I, I never knew that. And I'm thinking what you see on TV, you know, um, you know, it's going to be sunny. And, you know, but because it's in a valley, you can get all different kind of weather, just like with Miami. Well, I, I I didn't go to Miami. I went to Jacksonville, Florida. And, you know, you're thinking, you know, you're seeing these 
palm trees and you thinking, you know, uh, you know, because you're looking at TV, Miami Vice and all that shit. But like the elder, uh, big, big, uh, the elder, big, big Gad said, you know, some grimy niggas in, uh, in Jacksonville, you know what I mean? Which it was. Um, Lord preserved me, kept me away from, him. but you know, you could just tell some grimy ass niggas. So with that all being said, Salaki, I'm all over the place. But um, you just got to be watchful. That's what scripture is talking about being circumspect, you know. Um, so, mm -hmm. and, you know, like I said, fair use, fair use. It's like a three-minute video, so. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I did it. I did yeah. inhale. <laughs> I've been a little harsh on her, and I know I'm a little, I'm a little sensitive today. I'm about to go off the grid, so there's just a lot going on here. Connor, give me something. Just give me some good Kamala stuff. Because she could be president of the United States. I don't want people jumping off the bridge today. Give me just like a bunch of good Kamala. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. You know? What can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened and as you can see these is you know these are tactics they use in these campaigns like with um you know um make america great again or um when uh you know even with obama when he came with with the change and what did he do you know you know i was telling my sister recently because we were we were talking about something i'm not gonna go into detail but I said, pay attention to this man. What changed when he got into office? And then you had a group of individuals that believe a particular thing were given rights that they didn't have prior. So why would it be so far-fetched that he may be one? By what has been. What can be unburdened by what has been. Because that gets into your psyche. You know what I mean? You're saying those phrases over and over and over, you know. So the United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically that's wrong. But at one point in time, Ukraine was a part of Russia. You know, the USSR, you know. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhaled. I did, in, I did inhale. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. Harris explains her pro-pot stance and admits that she indulged in the substance while in college. Then this exchange happened. What does Kamala Harris listen to? What were you listening to when you was high? <laughs> what was on? What song was Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, definitely Snoop. Uh-huh. Uh Tupac. You guys have a searing headache. Like like almost like you've been stabbed in the head with some sort of giant machete going right through your temple. That's what I have. Um there's a lot there of her greatest hits. Um interestingly, most interesting interestingly, perhaps Kamala Harris graduated college in nineteen eighty six. She went to grad school and finished in nineteen eighty nine and she passed the bar in nineteen ninety. Uh, in that video that you just heard there, she's saying that she was smoking pot while listening to Snoop Dogg. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Snoop Dogg's record, his first record, Doggy Style, it's a classic, that was released in 1993. Uh, and the first Tupac uh, is Tupacalypse, which was released in 1991. So that stoned crazy woman who also, by the way, jailed thousands of people in California for smoking weed while she was admitting that she smokes weed, uh, she also made up that she listened to... to uh, Snoop Dogg while getting high. And that's the point. You know what I'm saying? If you take time to really think about, she literally just lied on there to, you know, have something in common with the average, you know, everyday nigga. You know what I mean? Because, you know, Clinton did the same thing. You know? When they're not understanding that, you know, well, you know, the right and the left and, you know, the Republicans and the Democrats are two different wings of the same bird, you know. You know, you'll see a Democrat come into office and make all these policy changes. Like, for instance, what Biden just did and then 
more than likely it'll be a Republican that come into office. I mean, but like, you know, because a few brothers touched on this topic, you know, with this, um, you know, with this um, Kamala Harris situation, you know, being the, you know, running for being the president when in actuality it might not necessarily be an election, you know, look at the state of the world, you know. But at the same time, you got to understand it's whatever the will of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahushai is. Yahweh means he exists. Uh, Shem meaning in the name Yahweh Shai meaning he saves or he delivers. Because the people that rule the world, you know, you know, scripture tell you that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. They control everything. So although we're in debt, they can always, you know, give them more money. Now, I, I feel through the spirit that something's really about to take place because I can't remember the name of the loan, BHTP loan or something like that. But that program that they started, they ended that program because pretty much uh, all the banks are insolvent, you know, to the point where they say the Fed is actually insolvent, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, if the elites aren't really funding the banks like that. And that's why you're seeing so many bank closures. Um, how much more do they need America? You know, you already seeing the influx of all these immigrants. You know, I remember hearing about how America was going to become a third world country. I heard that back when they passed NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. And I was in high school at that time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny because Jake, two thirds of our people, the scriptures tell you, um, curse be the man that trusted in man. Jeremiah chapter 17. Our people will put their trust in everything but their power. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You know, they'll put their trust in the system. They'll put their trust in their enemy. You know, they'll put their trust in, 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 in a nigga that look like them. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'll put their trust in something carnal. You know, something physical. You know, because you got niggas talking about still chase the bag, but not realizing that the bag is about to be over with. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nonetheless, nobody want to trust in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. But, you know, you got like-minded believers, brothers and sisters that trust in him. And that's why we put in our faith in the Lord, you know. That's why we're trying to spiritually prepare for what's to come. Because, again, you know, the Lord is making good with his promises. The scriptures say certain things is going to be taking place at the end of the, you know, the end of the age. And we're seeing these things take place. It's the book of, uh, of um, uh, Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 22. And it reads, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. You know, sottish goes into basically stupid, you know, you know. You know, what's that in the book of Isaiah? Isaiah, uh, Salakia. It's Isaiah 1. Yeah, Isaiah 1 and verse 3. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox know of his owner and the ass his master's, master's crib, but Israel doth not know my people do, doth not consider. I'm going to read it in the NLT and it reads, even an ox knows its owner and a ducky recognizes its master's care. So, an uh, ox and a donkey are considered dumb animals. They, they're beasts of burden. They usually, you know, an ox or a donkey usually carry loads of heavy, you know, they carry heavy shit, you know. And a donkey's known for being stubborn. So, <laughs> that's a hell of an analogy the Lord used to describe his people. But it said these two animals still recognize who cares for them. But Israel does not know its master. My people does so like my people don't recognize my care for them. You know, scriptures talk about, uh, you know, pretty much uh, how, you know, the Lord still even, you know, this devil feels a certain kind of way and treats a certain kind of way. But yet still, you know, this devil, you know, got a welfare system that most of our people think is uh, the way to, you know, because our people are always about finessing. <laughs> you know, that's what you got that nigga finesse two times. You know, this nigga day for that's two times. It just show you how this society is so fucking crazy and retarded. Like, I mean, 
nowadays a nigga that snitch, he's given a, a position of you know, it, it's just not looked at it like a you, you you know it used to be uh honor amongst thieves and shit, shit like that, but really has it ever really been? You know, I, I questioned that one time. You know, certain people used to have certain codes, and you see in a lot of that shit like just like it's it's all about. You know, and and, that, and that's like Second Timothy chapter three. You know, people be in vain. You know, people will, will fuck over you. Like they talk about that. Not to switch the subject, but you got that one guy that's on um, the internet. Um, what's his name? FBG um, Butter, and, and and he said fuck the people he grew up with because they hating on him because of how he's trying to feed his family. But when you hear the guys that he grew up around, they like this nigga snitch. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, it's just crazy. Or the whole example of her, you know, bragging about getting high, but locking people up that was selling weed. You know, or how they idolize people that did wrong if you escape through the cracks. You know? Like, it just, it's, it's funny to me. How America is, it, it isn't really black and white. It's a, a lot of gray. You know? This is the book of uh, Exodus chapter 23 and verse 2 and it reads, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause of decline after many to rest judgment. The point I wanted was uh, to not follow a multitude to do evil. You're going to have a lot of our people that's about to go pretty much participate in this ritual of voting. And you know, I didn't even know there was an article about this, but just through the spirit, I happened to find one because when you go into that, like a ritual pretty much is, I, I wouldn't find the actual um, Google definition of it. It's a religious or a solemn ceremony consisting of a series of actions performed according to prescribed order. That's considered a ritual. And voting, you know, you got your, uh, you know, a series of actions performed in that, you know. You know, of course, we have rituals as well, you, you know, because, you know, you got righteous... Um, cults and you got wicked cults you know what I mean but uh, I looked at voting like a ritual because they do this every four years and I was listening to the elder from ancient of days Mawatazak um, that's a beautiful powerful brother he was going into you know every four years they basically come with this you know these illusions of, especially for our people and our people get caught up in that you know looking to Esau Edom to basically make the plan feel a little bit more even or balanced or looking for them to give them reparations or, or something when like the elder apostle Tahar said we'll never get reparations you'll be a fucking fool to believe that you're gonna get reparations i mean you you've had um candidates and, 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 and individuals run on a notion of yeah i'll give you back reparations <laughs> you know it says, voting as a ritual inspired by the first election. It says, tomorrow we have a high stakes election. And, and a full blood moon eclipse. The moon will turn red into Earth's shadow on election day for the first time in U.S. history. For our ancient ancestors, the lunar eclipse signified world chaos that required ritual intervention. It was a point I wanted. Oh, this, this is what I want. It says, rituals are a pattern of activity infused with value and meaning. In coming together as a citizens to cast our votes, we use terminology similar to casting a spell and magic. We are taking the action and ritual to have our intentions affect the, 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 the future. Psychology tells us that rituals can be a powerful way to connect to ourselves and one another at a time of challenge. And it says, votes are like magic. That's why it's called casting. Casting your vote. And, and maybe that's why it's so powerful. And maybe that's why they break their neck to get somebody 
many people in it because it's a part of this system. You know, you got to remember certain groups of people like, you know, you Israelites, but you call yourself so-called black people. You, you weren't given the right to vote. You just recently got the right to vote. You know, I mean, I can actually say in my lifetime, I was never a real big voter and I've only voted, I think like two times out of my lifetime. You know, and then people will be quick to selling you, uh, you know, uh, you know, things don't change because you don't put no energy into it. But again, it's two wings to the same bird. You know what I mean? I remember voting for Obama and I didn't vote the, for the first, um, his first, uh, you know, for his first term. And the second term, when I voted, I felt so shitty after I voted. And I voted when um, Bush was in office. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that was the year that you had so many people in my county. They actually looked at the uptick of votes because normally no that many people never voted in that county. And they could actually see, you know, because that's how bad he was in, 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 in the office. Yeah. During his presidency, you know, I recall he would give the federal government. I mean, he was the federal government was given you know, states money, but it was like they had to come sit and personally talk to him before, like they wasn't really spending no money on nothing. It was a, a few, it wasn't money for like programs to better yourself like that. You know, they wasn't doing a lot of street work. I watched them do the same streets. In, 19, in 1866, citizenship was granted to native born Americans. In 1869, the 15th Amendment gave African Americans me and the right to vote. I didn't know it was that early, 1869. In the 1920s, the 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote. In 1966, poll taxes were deemed unconstitutional. In 1965, the Voting Rights Act barred barriers to voting based on race. In 1971, the voting age was moved from 21 to 18. In 1975, the Voting Rights Act was amended to provide multilingual voting materials. In 1982, to add accessibility for people with disabilities. In 1993, it became possible to register to vote at the DMV, increasing the voter base by 30 million people in one year. So in order to be like a Babylonian, you can see the voting system is very much tied into it. So of course, I can see, you know, these devils, you know, because you got to understand this place is founded on witchcraft, you know what I mean? You know, and people don't believe that, but at the same time, if you understand and know a lot I mean, when you go into the sacred geometry of Washington, D.C. and look at, you know, the symbolism and how it's set up, you know, you know, it is set up on witchcraft. In fact, I'm going to get this. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 47. And then they say they don't know who actually um, was the architect for... Um, you know, Washington, but come to find out if it's true, which it more than likely is, you know, I hear it was a Jake. <laughs> you know what I mean? It says verse uh, Isaiah 47, verse 12. Stand now. And the scriptures tell you that Jacob is the former of all things to the point that Jacob have taught the wicked these ways. Uh, Isaiah 47, verse 12. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so, be thou shall be able to, to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly pro prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. You know, because this place again is founded on witchcraft. You know, Book of Nahum chapter 3 tells you this. You know, um, but, you know, at the same time, that's the left-hand side of the, the Heavenly Father, who people ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah, meaning Yahweh, meaning he is or he exists, Ba'ashem meaning in the name, Yahweh Shah, meaning he saves or he delivers, you know. That's, you know, the left-hand side. and But the right-hand side is this truth. That's why you have, you know, it's the spirit. I was doing my video and the elders started their lie, you know. Uh, you know, so, and the right hand is is stronger than the left. I believe it's in the book of Ecclesiastes. I found it once, but I can't. I'm not about to look for it right now. 
But uh, yeah, so again, this voting system and you know this wearing a circus with this, oh, you know, because they put an energy into it. But the thing is, and it's funny because you gotta remember they pushed that movie Civil War this year. You know, like I said, you got a, a so-called black woman who's not black running against a. a Edomite man that's talking about make America great again that has the support of majority of those you know Christian Edomite men and what was Christian Edomite men doing to Jacob back when he was given the right to vote stopping him from voting you know what I'm saying like you know stopping him from putting up crucifixes in front of his house you know you know the Knights of Columbus type shit you know Lynching them. To show you how these fucking people the devil, because the scriptures tell you you're not you're supposed to, not supposed to let a body hang overnight. The curse is the body that let hang overnight. They would lynch you and leave you. You know that's the whole point of that song, Strange Fruit. This is the reality of this place. This place was built on blood, and the, I'm gonna end it with that. It's a perfect scripture because this place was built on built built off of blood. And being that it's built off of blood. <laughs> the only way to cleanse this place is off of the blood. So that's why it says, you know, a prudent man looks towards his goings. You know, Proverbs chapter 14, the simple will believe of every word, but the prudent man look towards his goings. If you really could see if the Lord dealing with you, you can see this place has no future. And if you a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Central India, what's any Indian, Haitian, you know, of course, we got to do what you got to do on a daily basis. You got to live, you gotta take care of your family, whatnot. But, you know, you should be like, you should be really. Because the scriptures say, fear not those that could kill the body, but fear the one that could kill both the body and soul in hell. Roughly paraphrased. So you should be trying to get spiritually right you know because all hell is about to break loose the book of numbers chapter 33 the book of numbers chapter 35 and the point is verse 33 and it reads so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for it to follow the land. It's like it. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood it to follow the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So of course it's going to be a huge civil war. You know, why is it such, so far-fetched that it's going to be major bloodshed in this land, this country known as America, but scripturally as Babylon the Great, the land of confusion. This land was taken by force by these devils when they raped, robbed, and murdered, you know, the tribe of Gad and Reuben, Rahabam, you know. You know, and, you know, the tribe of Yehawada, who was brought over here on cargo slave ships. You know. A lot of death is attributed to these devils. The so called white man. And the only way to cleanse this land. Is by the blood of those that shed the blood of. You know the Israelites on here. You know. So it's going to be a civil war. It's going to be you know race wars. It's going to be all kind of bloodshed. And you can see the Lord literally, you know, you know, um, the brothers did a video talking about the Lord is fed up, roughly paraphrased. And you seeing that, you know, the scriptures talk about having smoke in the Lord's nose, you know, the Lord, you know, those doors of mercy, those gates of mercy, you know, are, are, are closing, you know, that's why you seeing this uptick in crime, you know, like, like. If you pay attention to some of the headlines and some of the shit that's going on, like that Edomite cop shooting that Jake woman, Sonya Massey or whatever. And I just read something about how um, Harris called the family. What good is that going to do? You know, 
showing you that was spiritual, like the brother said. He told her to go get the very pot that she got shot over. Now, if that ain't spiritual. So, you know, there's a little bit of rambling or whatnot, but you know, so lock you. But you know, it's all through the spirit. So uh, yeah, just don't be deceived, you know, because again, our people like to hope in everything but the most high. When eventually, you know, you know, faith is the substance of things not seen. You know, like the elder brother uh, Bakar Mahfa was speaking on, he said, shit, is if you could see it, of course everybody would believe or you would think, common sense would say. But, you know, faith is believing what you can't see. So, I'm going to end the lesson with that. If you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, similar Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of your power, with your name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, Ba'a, Shemi, or you will be destroyed with that. I give all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Elohim like Yahweh, Ba'a, Shem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'a, Shem, Racha, Kudash, Bukatham. I want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of DMS. Peace and salutation to the Akian around the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with sincerity and truth. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. Shalom to the sisters, brothers and the sisters, like your brothers and sisters that's listening and learning. And Shalom to all the true believers. And, you know, till next time, Shalom, Shalom, and Abad Babal.